you had to create a set of criteria for the college football playoff committee to determine who's in, what would said criteria be if you had to limit to three data points? I've never been diagnosed with ADD. I think I have it though. And so a lot of times when I'm answering these sorts of questions, all this stuff just becomes word salad, uh, data and different data points and data sets, all that stuff. I, I know what I value, but I really want it laid out like a fifth grader would. And so today, because of said undiagnosed condition, I hit up Nerd Josh over from College Football Nerds. He's great at this stuff. I ask him for legal advice all the time. I ask him for data advice all the time. And uh, instead of stealing his thoughts, because I know he's lurking in the chat over here, I, I just said, you know what? You send me what you think, because I already know we agree. You're just going to word it. You're going to articulate it a lot fancier than I ever would. And here's what we came up with. By we, I mean him. But I agree with all this. First and foremost, I would value record. Even though you are not always what your record says you are, record is the most important thing. Even I'm telling you, winning football games has got to always be the most important thing, but there's a proper way to interpret this. For anyone that is wanting to be honest about the process, you've got to be able to put these wins in tiers, in quadrants, if you will. And so not only do I want to know what your record is, I want to know how much quad one wins you have, how much quad two wins you have. And we can you know, go down a different rabbit hole of talking about how we define the quadrants, but I need to know how many wins you have, how many losses you have. But look, if you're out there 12 and 0, but you don't have anything better than one quadrant two win, and I got uh, my buddy over here, University of Arkansas, sitting at nine and three, but they got three quad one losses and four more quad two wins, I may think they're better than you, even though you're undefeated and they're sitting here with three losses. So yes, record matters. We got to properly interpret it. Second thing, and this is where that comes into play. Opponent adjusted rating. Think S&P Plus. Uh, think in any, any of a number of them float out there. I think some are more reputable than others. S&P Plus is pretty universally respected, though. That's Bill Connolly's rating. And what this is, is it is, it, is, is slow down. It is a rating, not a ranking. It is a rating, but it is a rating to where you have the teams you have played factored in. So let's go back to that scenario. If you're 12-0, and 0, but you haven't played anything better than the 61st best team in the country, but I'm 9-3, and three, and I've played three top 10 teams, and those are my losses, an opponent-adjusted rating system may have me ahead of you. Because that, that system's looking at you and saying, well, you kind of got a hollow 12-0, and 0, because if I were to give you this schedule, I think, my system thinks, I think that you would be a three-loss team, minimum three-loss team. So I would have opponent adjusted ratings. And then you got to have a way to properly define true strength of schedule. Now, when I say true strength of schedule, I do not mean we get to the finish line and then we take the college football playoff committee rankings and then we ask, all right, how many games have you played against the top 25 as currently defined? And that's how we're going to determine your strength of schedule. I don't care about that. Don't care because there are a lot of factors that have probably come into play during the season that have adjusted the value that would have been on a game that you and I played the second week of September. Famously, we have seen games pitting top 10, top 15 caliber teams in week one, week two, week three. One team beats the other team. The other team incurs a lot of injury down the stretch and then they get all discombobulated and sideways and they go off the rails and they got four or five losses. And all of a sudden, people want to tell you what your eyeball saw in week three, that high level competitive game, it wasn't really what you thought it was. Because look, this team's a five loss team. So that in week three was a win against a five loss team. No, it wasn't. And so you know my theory on this. I, and we can go down the rabbit hole again if we want to, I want a way to determine the value of a game. Whether it's a win or a close loss, I want that value determined that day. And the only way you're adjusting that, aside from the rare exception to the rule, the only way I would permit you to adjust that is if you inflated the value of a win. I don't have any problem if I beat a team 30 to 27 in week two, and then that team goes on to have a run of their own, and I got criticized for barely beating them in week two, but by week nine, you're saying, uh, that win actually was a whole lot better than we thought it was. I don't have a problem with that, uh, because teams don't deceptively get a whole lot better unless it's legit. Teams deceptively get a whole lot worse all the time, and it shouldn't take away from the value you have uh, from winning or playing against them months ago. So I want record properly defined. 
I want opponent adjusted rating in there. I want a true strength of schedule. And here's why you have to have all these. You have to be able to distinguish between teams like 2020 Alabama, 2020 Ohio State. Those were teams that dominated a bunch of other good teams. Then you had a team like 2020 Brigham Young that dominated a bunch of not good teams. And then you had a team like 2020 Notre Dame that barely beat some good teams. So there are different calibers of teams there. I have to be able to properly define and I have to be able to properly interpret. And since this is not the NFL and never will be, no matter how much you guys want it to be, we will not ever play equal schedules. Don't, that doesn't mean you have to turn the sport upside down. It does mean though that we have to go about determining our postseason a little bit differently. I think we handled that well, especially for thoughts that weren't authentically ours.